There's a verse in ministry in uh, Colossians 4.17 that I just want to exhort a little bit on. You have to be a little patient with me. I have new, my new Bible, so it's hard for me to find stuff. But anyways, here it says in, in Colossians 4.17. Now, when I first read this verse, it was many years ago. I mean, a long time ago. I have a different perspective today than I did when I read it then, which is probably 20 years ago. <clears throat> because of the seasons that God has taken me through. But he says this, take heed to the ministry which you have received unto the Lord, that you may fulfill it. In other words, he's saying, take heed to the ministry by which God has given you, that you may fill it to the fullest. That to the fullest extent you would accomplish that which God has apprehended you for. And we would never forget that when God, when we were received Jesus, when he said, come into our life, when we received him, he apprehended us for something. The Bible says in Philippians, for that which he has apprehended us. And that thing is your ministry. It's your calling. It's your inheritance. It's the greatest thing that God's ever given you, other than the new birth. And the ministry you've received from the Lord is of great honor. Uh, it's, it's by his appointment. It's by his command. That God tells us here that we are to fulfill that ministry. He says, take heed that you fill it to the fullest. Now he said to Timothy, he said, make full proof of your ministry. In fact, Jesus, when he went up to the mountain and after he went to the mountain and he was transformed and he was with uh, James and John, I believe, but he saw Elijah, the prophet, right? And he saw Moses. But after he came down, it says, as they had spoke to, uh, spoken unto him, it was that he would accomplish something before him. And God has something for all of us to accomplish, and it will give us great satisfaction. Your ministry will give you satisfaction in, in your heart. But all ministry really begins with prayer. In the book of Colossians, he says this, Devote yourself, this is chapter, two, uh, chapter 4, verse 2, he says, Devote yourself to prayer, keeping yourself alert with an attitude of thanksgiving. So the ministry of prayer really is where it all begins. Some things in the Bible we know just absolute. We don't do adultery, we don't steal, we don't, there's things we just don't do. But some things you can only find through the ministry of prayer, such as what you're called to, where you're to go, where you're to live, where you're to plant a church. Whatever it is, that vocation or that calling... And your vocation is your calling. You're only going to find through prayer. And then Jesus said, oh, that men would pray always. That men would pray always. Because he knew that through prayer, we would find those things that we're looking for. I mean, you know, how would I find that I'm to live in Tatch Lake in Burma? I'm not going to find that in the Bible. But I am going to find it in the ministry of prayer where God speaks to my heart. And he says, this is what I want you to do, or this is where I want you to be. I mean, I think about when I first stepped on the property that I bought, and I stepped there, and I felt God say, now buy this. Well, that's a whole oceans away from where I lived, a whole culture away from where I lived, but prayer led me to that place. Nothing else but prayer put my foot on that piece of land that said, purchase this. And even at that time, I didn't know what I was really purchasing it for. Of course, a Bible school, but not the children's home. I didn't think of that. But God knows. And in prayer is where you discern things. The Bible says in the book of Acts, they continued in prayer and supplication. It says that in Acts 2.42 and Acts 6.4. He says, in, in this verse, he says, watch in the same, in verse 3. And he says, oh, and he tells us to keep alert in the same and with the attitude of thanksgiving. Why does he say thanksgiving? Well, he says thanksgiving, that when we're praying, we should be thankful because it's a heart of believing that God can lead you. You know, I used to wake up and sometimes I would say, well, Lord, I know you will not leave me in the desert. Lord, you will take me to my promised land. I'm not sure where it is. I'm not sure when it is. But I know that I know you are faithful to take me to the promised land. And God does it first through the ministry of prayer. And thanksgiving is just a sign that you're believing him. 
You have expectation from the Lord. And so students, as you go, go with a heart of thanksgiving and go with a heart of expectation and go with an attitude that you'll continue in prayer and all that God asks you to do. Praying for yourself and praying for others. Now he tells us this here, which is very interesting as we look at uh, verse 4, 5, and 6. He says that you may make it clear in the way that I ought to speak. Conduct yourself with wisdom towards outsiders, making the most of opportunity. He says, let your speech be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how to respond to each person. Listen. That there is also talking about evangelism. Evangelism is really about sowing the seed. And so wherever we go, whatever ministry we have, it is still about sowing seed. One thing we don't do is we don't judge the soil of one's heart. But we do sow the seed into people's hearts. Amen? So we, I know, we, we can't, you know, the Bible says we see in part. And so we think, well, he may be ready, he may not be ready, they may be ready, we may not be ready. But when we sow the seed, of course, we know God tills the soil. So we don't judge the soil. We just sow the seed. And God will be faithful to water the seed. Many of you that have planted churches here, I'm sure that you are reaping the seeds that other have, have sown. One waters, right? One sows the seed, one waters, and one reaps. And God just asks us, sow the seed, sow the seed. So evangelism is a prayer and evangelism become an important part of whatever ministry God calls you to do, whatever ministry he calls you. And then he ta talks about being ready to answer or knowing your testimony. You know your testimony. Your testimony is where God shares the glory of God that lives within you to somebody else. So in your story is God's glory. In your story, whatever your story is, that's where God's glory is. You know, we might have a service where we say, oh, the glory of God was there. But really the glory of God, Christ in you, the hope of glory, the glory of God is the story that you have to tell. It's the testimony you have to tell. It's about changed lives. It's not about notoriety. Amen. So Paul said, listen, I have a you're looking for letters of condom, uh, commendation, right? He said, I don't have that letter, but what I do have is a love in my heart for you. So Paul wasn't looking for notoriety. He said, but what I do have is a changed life in you. So ministry is really all about changed lives. It's really about lives that are changed. Because the story that lives in you. I'm convinced more now than ever that God wants the story inside of us out on the streets. In other words, where we live, our neighbors, wherever that is. Whatever the place where he puts us in ministry. He wants that story out. Because in that story is his glory. That's his glory. I mean, in my life, I could give testimony after testimony after testimony. And in those testimonies, it's the glory of God saying, look what I did for Tommy. Look what I did for Pastor Rich. Look what I did for Pastor Rocky. Amen. And so all ministry is, it's about changed lives. It's about the internal grace that works on the inside of you. The Bible says the exceeding weight of his glory. In other words, it's increasing. It gets greater and greater on the inside of you. Whatever it is that God's doing in you, it becomes greater and greater and greater. Because as you walk with God, God brings you more deposits into your life. Amen? We don't stop at just one deposit. These, you have, you've had deposits of grace up to this point. But you will have many more in your walk with God. Many more deposits, because wherever God's called you, whatever he's called you to do, he will deposit grace in you. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. In other words, there were many deposits of, his gr of grace in Paul. And God will put many more deposits of his grace in you, so you can walk in the uniqueness of your calling. 
For one, it will be a different deposit. For another one, it'll be a different deposit. But he will give you grace. And that grace will be uh, empowering for you to do what God's called you to do. He says another thing here, which is very important. He said, let your speech always be seasoned with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may not know how to respond. Now listen. The greatest commodity that you have, the greatest commodity, some would say gold and silver and this and that, but the greatest commodity you have is your speech, what you release from your mouth. Because what you release from your mouth, your testimony, your story, your deposits, is what God pours on somebody else. So your speech has great commodity. And so that's why Paul said, have it seasoned with salt and wisdom. Because he knew what speech would do over the lives and hearts of people. So in your ministry... We need to have wisdom and we need to have grace in the speech by which we work with people or those around us, right? Verse 7, he says this, and then I'll close. And all of my fairs, Tychus, our beloved brother and faithful servant and fellow bond servant in the Lord, will bring you information. So, listen. Jesus said the greatest is the servant. So for us to fulfill our ministry to the fullest... To the fullest, he said, fulfill it to the fullest. Then you have to have a servant spirit. Which means a servant spirit for those around you, for those that you're working with. You know, the Lord has been teaching me I need to understand or know the state of the people around me. So that I can work with them. So when you're praying for others, saying, Lord, well, tell me, Lord, help me with their perspective. Help me with how I can speak to them. Help me, Lord, to see what I can do for help them in. Amen. So a servant heart will do that. He looks for opportunities because they understand it's a privilege. It's an honor to serve people. When we're serving people, we're serving the Lord. So I know, you know, I fill my little truck up, and I take these children, and I take them to a Burmese outreach. I'm driving, sometimes my brother-in-law, whatever. And they go listen to this Burmese young ministry. I know I'm serving the Lord, because I'm serving these kids, I'm taking them. To a place where God's going to touch them. Where God's going to minister to them. And so we as ministers called to fulfill our ministry to the fullest. The last thing we need, what we need to add to our hearts is servant hearts. And I know that's taught here all the time. Looking for opportunities to serve. Ministers are servants of Christ and fellow servants of one another. One Lord, but many members by which we serve. So I just exhort you, uh, Bible students, remember God's given you a ministry to fulfill. It begins with prayer. You sow seed of evangelism. You look for opportunity to serve. And God will take you to the place and he will fulfill Really, he'll fulfill the desire of your heart. God will do that. And as you speak, you'll pour out God's grace on other lives. Father, I thank you for these students. I thank you for what you've done in them this year. I thank you for the grace you put in them this year. I thank you for the grace you'll bring to them next year and the weeks and the months after and the years after. I thank you for each and every one. I pray for great grace to come upon their lives. They'll come upon their hearts, Lord. With great grace, Lord, they will serve you and fulfill to the fullest all that God's called them to do. In Jesus' name, amen.